Hello and welcome to a new video. Today I will be going over the episode from Days Which Shook the World, which was a BBC2 uh, television series based on documentaries on famous world events, and this is on the Romanian Revolution of 1989. This will be a two part, um, I'm going to make the two videos separately because of the length, as it's around half an hour, so that means two videos around 15 minutes each up with. I will be going over what the documentary gets right, what it gets wrong. Um, also facts, and these um, will be backed up by sources. Most of the um, facts will be backed up from the book uh, The Rev Romanian Revolution of December 1989. It is an incredible book and it is great reading for um, learning about the revolution in detail. And the best part about it is it gives sources on every single page um, so we can um, know more, uh, we can get a more authentic view of what happened with um, the proper sources from the time period and also afterwards. So I should state that this um, television series premiered in 2003 and that's until 2005. So when I pick up on errors, um, it is totally, it was totally within the boundary for them to have the correct information by 2003. And also um, uniforms were absolutely available by then. So, and also this is the BBC, the British Broadcasting Corporation. Um, so when we look at the uniforms and I pick out errors, in my opinion, um, there really is uh, no excuse for them because the things that they have used in the documentary is, is really quite a pure reproduction, uh, poor reproduction of the Romanian uniforms. Um, so yeah, so any information that's wrong, I'm gonna pick up on and show that by 2003, 2005, they absolutely had the sources to correct these. So I don't know why they've put um, kind of just false facts in or just at some points I will mention things which is kind of like this is just it seems completely um, complete fantasy and made up um, and also when it comes to the physical the uniforms they're, they're, there's, there's no excuses okay so let's get this started uh, the way I'm recording this I've got my microphone which I used so in the last video I did remember to put on the pop shield this time as soon as I had finished recording that I put it back in its box and there was a little fuzzy pop shield. So it's on this time, so it should sound better. Um, I might, uh, you might realize I have a cold, so the audio I'm hoping doesn't get too bad. Um, but so to start off, I have my list, my long list of facts and errors with the documentary. So we'll just go through the first 15 minutes. I'm watching this on my laptop currently, so I will stop it at the point. Uh, I will say the time, so when I'm editing, I know exactly which moment to freeze at, and then we can go for it. So perfect. Let's get this started. So I will be cutting out and chopping through parts of the documentary, especially those that go over pre-revolution and the Ceausescu's because that's not what we're focusing on. So yeah, it might cut through a bit, but obviously you can see the full thing on YouTube. That's Days That Shook the World, Remaining Revolution, 1989. So to start with, at 2 minutes or 5, we see Captain Burero um, putting tinsel on um, I stopped at this point because the star appears firstly to be some kind of Soviet star, either for um, a pilotka or kind of cockade. I have no idea what it's doing here. The Romanians didn't use any kind of star insignia since the People's Republic era. And even if this was a People's Republic star, which would make sense in the first place, secondly, it's definitely not a Romanian star. It, to me, very clearly looks like a, um, a latter 80s Soviet star. About three minutes twenty, it talks about how Ceausescu and others had saw the these uh, protesters as enemies of the state, as um, foreign influencers, and this is absolutely correct. Um, there are many stories from the revolution. One which I'd like to highlight is the um, uh, scapegoating of Arab students um, in the book, The Remaining Revolution of December nineteen eighty nine. Regals of some great um, detailed stories about how. Um, some of the soldiers and officers of the infantry, so those that were for the revolution, um, thought that um, there was secret Arab soldiers from Libya or uh, Syria, Iraq, who had been kind of transported in to defend Ceausescu. Um, there was um, Arab students at uh, military academies and schools in Romania, but it is not. They had no organised um, position within the revolution, either for or against. And secondly. Um, there's a report of a, um, on the Hungarian border, 
a South Korean journalist accompanying another um, journalist entering Romania during the revolution. And soldiers of the revolution had physically never seen anyone of a different ethnicity, so that they thought this South Korean journalist was Arab, and they actually were um, nearly, nearly beaten to death. And this is all, um, you can find the sources within uh, the book, which kind of just goes to show how tense the situation was and how basically, um, yes, indeed, foreigners were often scapegoated. Um, obviously, those four, and I guess Ceausescu, scapegoated um, many foreigners, especially the Hungarians in Transylvania. But that's also to say those four the revolution were so fearful of um, a counter-revolution and, you know, um, not being outside the country and not being, um, not having seen other ethnicities, saw the South Korean reporter as an Arab, and therefore, as an Arab, he was against the revolution. So this is absolutely correct, and it's it's really nice that I mentioned this. Right, so now at four minutes, um, thanks to the bad lighting, it's kind of hiding most of the uniform, but I can already tell that it is not the best. So. We will say this in more detail when we get a better light source, but you can already tell um, that the great coat doesn't really look right. The helmet isn't um, one which would have been used. We'll go over that much later um, when we get some better light. And I kind of also want to add, in my own opinion, they're actually pretty good representations, though the two actors playing Ceausescu and um, Elena, um, I think they did quite a good job with them. But obviously, that's just my opinion. So at 5 minutes 22, we can see that the soldier's trousers are clearly ballooning out from his boots, which is not at all correct. Both the Romanian soldier's winter and summer trousers had loops at the bottom, so that your trousers would be straightened and constantly, um, they couldn't basically balloon out, as we can see here. Um, it, it's almost comical how much they're ballooned out, and we can see the silhouette um, against the uh, the white door. So yeah, this is clearly... Um, not correct. So at 5 minutes 43 we can see the captain sitting around with other soldiers as they're informed uh, by an officer. Although we cannot see the front of the great courts, we can immediately tell that these are not in fact Romanian great courts. Um, I will put a picture up now. The Romanian great courts had a, uh, a triangle right at the top just as it met um, the collar. I'll be able to put it up now. So even though we cannot see the front of them, it is already obvious that these are not, in fact, remaining great courts. And in the early 2000s, these were not only have been um, available um, for the production company to buy, but also incredibly cheap. So I don't think there's much excuse for that. So at 6 minutes 12, we can see again the helmet. So the helmets, um, the Romanians did use a Soviet style helmet during the People's Republic, but afterwards, especially during the Ceausescu era, they totally converted over to the um, earlier Dutch design and the remodeled the helmet and made it slightly smaller. So I put two pictures up. One of them is of the Second World War Romanian design and another one is of the later social design. These are the two helmets which you will see in basically all the revolution photos. I will put some pictures up now of when you can actually see the Second World War helmets which were refurbished for kind of second line use being worn during the revolution and obviously the hundreds of thousands of revolution pictures where they are wearing the later um, model. So in general, I would like to add that I will not be commenting on every single thing that they got wrong, and it's likely that I've missed quite a lot um, of the mistakes. But in this video, I just wanted to cover things that I personally um, had spotted and kind of explain them more and describe them. But also, I don't want this just to be this is you know the worst documentary ever. Um, it's not, it's not possible to make you know absolutely everything perfect and get every single little detail in. But I just want to point out the biggest flaws in it. But also later on, I will pick up things like, um, like I said again, with about the enemies being seen as um, foreign saboteurs by both sides. They mentioned that. So this isn't. I don't want this just to be hate towards it. Um, they do make some very good points. And obviously, um, while the costume department so far has not been great, costume outfit department, whatever you want to call it. Um, I still think it's great that this was uh, produced so that more people could understand it, even though if there are some errors, 
and kind of get into learning more about the revolution and socialist Romania. As they set out for the balcony, neither Elena or Nikolai realized the extent to which Romania has changed. Again, so this is another point which I'd like to um, praise the um, documentary for. Yes, he had actually been on a trip to Iran. He had left for Iran around about the start, so around the, when the um, problems and the protests in Timisoara were starting. So that is an absolutely um, correct statement that he had not realised um, what he had come back to. Ceausescu has been speaking to the crowd for eight minutes when the mood changes. The chant of Timisoara is heard. Right, so this is one point which kind of gets me angry. So this is 12.30. No, they did not start chanting Timisoara. Anyone um, with at least a bit of common sense can hear that the so the audio mixers have clearly just added that onto the original audio, which really annoys me because that is, it's just completely false. It's, it's a complete lie. They've added the audio of the Timisoara chanting onto the original footage, which is just awful for a documentary. Who, who thought this was a good idea? This is supposed to be a, a historical documentary and you, you're just lying. You've, you've, you, you've edited it to add audio on top. No, that's a complete lie. And in other documentaries, which I will be going over, they will say that, oh, you can hear the chat, the, the crowd jeering at him. You can hear the crowd shouting at him, shouting him down. No, that's a complete lie as well. You can clearly hear that it screams, screams of panic, not jeering. And in the book, on page 51, it talks about how the source of disturbance was never properly determined and that it is likely that it was just a loud, loud noise which could, which um, was either caused deliberately or by an accident um, and the book suggests things like a collapsing lampstand because the footage shows how the um, live footage was then re-established and Ceausescu continued with his speech. So no, they didn't shout Timishwara. They weren't jeering at him. It was a panic because of a disturbance, either deliberate or not. Okay? So it's kind of that it really annoys me because that is that is really awful documentary making. Just lying and literally doctoring the audio. <laughs> that is that is absolutely awful. I don't understand what self respecting It blows the mind. I'm I'm quite speechless. I mean, this is probably awful to listen to me just rambling on about how bad this is. But this is awful for a historical documentary just to completely lie and add the audio. Right. Before I ramble on some more, I will move on to the next point. So at 40 minutes, this is something in the documentary's favour, and this is quite nice. What looks to be original footage. So it's quite a nice shot in which we can see the um, the television and the speech going on, which pans over to the East of Bukharest. So that is some quite nice original footage. Okay, I think that will do it for today. Um, there will be part two. I have got many of the notes. I have another two and a half pages. Because in the second half, it really uh, kind of goes up a gear with uh, regards to uniforms um, and yeah, other points. So thank you so much for listening. I hope it's been okay. So I have got the pop shield on the mic this time. I did remember that. I have got a bit of a cold, so maybe my nasally voice is even worse this week, which I do apologise for. So I do this every episode. Um, I'm not a complete expert on the subject, but parts which I've made a strong um, kind of denunciation of, especially with the Tim Schwara clip, which you just saw, that can all be shown in the sources, which I will link in the description. So don't think this is just my personal interject. Um, Parts which are, in my opinions, I believe I have stated, but those which I feel strongly about them as not correct, um, I can link the book in the description, um, also the pages, physical pages themselves, um, and yeah, that would be great to show you that this isn't just coming off the top of my head. I hope that you enjoyed the first part of this video. Um, 
I, I don't really want to like, comment, subscribe because it's kind of, kind of stereotypical and kind of cringy, but it, it is true. I am a tiny channel. Um, you can comment what basically whatever you want because as a small channel, pretty much guaranteed to read it. Um, so yeah, I hope you have a wonderful Easter and thank you.